Welcome to Chinta Statistics and Data Science. Today we're going to solve this problem from CMI Data Science 2022, problem number one and problem number three. So let's start with problem number one. Let, so problem one says that let x be a binomial np random variable with pmf this probability x is equals to k is equals to n choose k p to the k into 1 minus p to the n minus k k running from 0 1 2 up to n right let and let t be a random variable defined as t equals to 1 if x is equals to 1 and 0 otherwise let e of t and v of t denote the expectation and the variance of the random variable t then which of the following statements is or are true Basically, we need to find the expectation of t and variance of t and check which of the options are true. So see, t is actually an indicator random variable, right? Because say, t takes two values, 1 and 0. 1 if x is equals to 1 and 0 if x not equals to 1, right? So this is the given thing. Given x follows binomial and t, t is this. So expectation of t is very easy to find. It's nothing but 1 into probability x is equals to 1 plus 0 into probability x not equals to 1. So ultimately, it's probability x is equals to 1, right? So probability x is equals to 1 is nothing but we know the PMF. We know the PMF of the x is this. So expectation of t is probability x is equals to 1 is n choose 1 into p to the 1 into 1 minus p to the n minus 1, right? So this is n into p into 1 minus p to the n minus 1. This is the expectation of t, right? This one. Very easy to find, right? Just very easy to find uh, direct application of the, uh, of the formula. Now, variance of t is actually expectation of t square minus expectation of t whole square right so we need to find expectation of t square this part we already know expectation of t so expectation of t square is actually again from the definition expectation of t square is equals to one square into probability x is equals to one plus zero square into probability x not equals to one see t only takes two values right so the square of those values and the corresponding probability so one square into this plus zero square into this so again this is probability x is equals to one which is nothing but n p into one minus p to the n minus 1. Again, this is the same as expectation of t. So variance of t is nothing but n into p into 1 minus p to the n minus 1 minus this thing whole square. Remember, because this is expectation of t whole square. So ultimately, it's this thing. Variance of t is n into p into 1 minus, 1 minus p to the n minus 1 whole multiplied by 1 minus p into n p into 1 minus p to the n minus 1. Right? This is the variance of t. So we have actually found three expressions, expectation of t, expectation of t squared, and expect, uh, variance of t. So expectation of the t is this obviously this parts this and expectation of t squared is also same so option c is true option d is not true because we know the expectation of t and option b is also not true and option option a option a expectation of t squared is this thing and the variance of t, is t variance of t we have already found out so option a and option c are the true true options true correct options of this problem option a and option c are the solution to this problem option b and d are wrong a and c are correct so there you have it the problem the, the it was it was a very easy problem the very straightforward like, application of things so it was very easy so yeah let's go to problem number three so say problem number three says which of the following statements is or are true so first one says for any real number r with modulus of r greater than one limit n tending towards infinity summation i running from one to n 17 into r to the n is equals to 17 by one minus r so we have to check is it true or false so first part say option uh, the first question option uh, question a so limit this summation i running from one to n 17 into r to the n this is actually nothing but 17 into r to the n into n because this part nothing is nothing of comprises of i here so this entire thing comes out of the summation and this the summation just i running from one to n just applies on a constant one so it's and this thing this, this expression is this thing, 17 into r to the n into n right now this is actually nothing but infinity right because if mod r is less than is greater than one then limit n tending towards infinity r to the n is actually infinity right it properly diverges to infinity so this thing is infinity and obviously n also tends towards infinity so this entire thing is infinity so obviously this is wrong 17 by r1 minus r it's not true so option the first question the first a question a is not true it's false right let's let's go to the second question so let i be a positive square root of minus one that means i is basically iota here and let x be any real number then tan x is equals to e to the i x minus e to the minus i x divided by i into e to the i x plus e to the i minus i x right so you have to check whether tan x is equals to this thing so remember from euler's identity 
if theta is a real number, then e to the i theta is actually cos theta plus i sin theta, where i is nothing but root over minus 1 iota here. So we know from the Euler's identity, this is true. Therefore, e to the i x is actually cos x plus i sin x, and e to the minus i x is actually cos x minus i sin x. Here, just replace x by minus x, you will get this expression. So e to the i x minus e to the minus i x divided by i into e to the i x plus e to the minus i x. Here, it's going to, going to be a minus sign. A minus a. Yeah. So this thing just um, subtracting this this equation one and equation two. This this first equation, second equation, we get this two i sine x and this adding these two. It's just using these two equations to figure out this the, the subtract the difference of this and the sum of this. So this is two i by sine x and divided by i into this part is two cos x. So ultimately it's tan x. So uh, second question, which is actually true, tan x can be written as this thing. So this is true. Now let what about c? So c says that this series one by one into two plus one by two into three plus one by three into four is, and so on is actually less than one. So let us see. So this thing, right? We have to check whether it is less than one or not. So let u n be the general term. It's one by n into n plus one. Okay. So we need to find the value of the series whether it converges or it diverges and if it converges whether it is less than one or not so basically the series we have to find the series right so let s and b the sequence of partial sums of the series we know what is the partial sum which is nothing but the sum of the first n terms of the series so s n is actually u1 plus u2 up to u n so it is nothing but summation u r r running from 1 to n so it's nothing but summation r running from 1 to n 1 by r into r plus 1 now this thing can be written as 1 by r minus 1 by r plus 1, right? It can be written as that. This it can be written as so after running the sums, it's 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3, and so on up to 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1, right? So this thing easily cancels out, cancel out. So minus half here plus half here, then again minus one third plus one third is going to be the next the first term of the next terms, and so on up to this thing is also going to be uh, cancelled. So ultimately, the thing that remains is 1 minus 1 by n plus 1. So, Sn is actually this. Thing. So, limit of Sn is actually 1, right? Limit n tending to infinity, it's 1. So, this is, we know that the sequence of partial sums is actually nothing but the approximation of the series. So, limit of this thing is basically means that this thing is actually 1. So, it's not less than 1, right? It's equal to 1. So, question C is also false. It's not true. So, till now, we have A is false, D is true, and C is also false. What about D? So the function fx is defined as fx is equals to 3 cos 3x if x lies between 0 and pi, pi by 6 and 0 otherwise. Is it probability density function? Let's see. So fx is this. So it can easily be, easily be uh, found out that the curve of this, of this function, 3 into cos 3 is actually this, 0 to pi by 6. It is something like this. Because we already know how to how to uh, trace the curve of cos x, and this is just change in the argument, replacing x by three x, and then multiplying it by three. This this scales the factor by a factor of three, right? So it it, it does it does have a uh, curve like this. So it, this entirely this is positive, right? So f x is not negative. That means if x lies between zero and pi by six, it is this thing, and otherwise it is zero. So ultimately, f x is not negative, right? For all x, so one of the conditions is true. For PDF, we need to check two conditions, whether the function is non-negative or not, and secondly, whether the function integrates towards integrate to 1 or not. The entire area of the function it should be 1. So the first uh, problem, so first property is satisfied. Fx is non-negative for all x. So this is good. So what about the second? So integral over the entire real numbers, fx dx is actually integral over 0 to pi by 6, fx dx, right? This integration is very easy, so it is nothing but 1. So it turns out that the integration is also holding true. So both the properties hold true, therefore fx is actually a PDF indeed. So option D is true. Therefore, option A, uh, option B and option D are true, and option A and option C are false. So yeah, there you have it. It was a very easy problem. So yeah, there you have it, the solution to this problem. So do like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more exciting problems. See you till next time.